Hey guys, and thank you so much for tuning into my channel. My name is The Lady Designer, and we are back with another tutorial. And this time we're going to talk about 10 building tips and tricks that everyone that plays Planet Zoo should know. Without further talking, let's jump into it. So the first thing I want to talk about is duplicating and duplicating inside and outside a building and moving your pieces. So what you see right over here is one building. I click this building and you see right over here, this is group 17 and this one contains eight objects. If we double click the building, we get inside of the editing group right over here. And this is going to be very important. The first thing I'm going to show you is how to duplicate a wall. You press Ctrl D and you can move a wall wherever you want it to be, but this is a grid piece. As you can see underneath it, there is a grid that appears. You can press C to move the object around on its spot, but it still stays on the grid. You also have these kind of pieces. These pieces are non-grid pieces. So if you press Ctrl D, you can move this one very smoothly around just like that. And these are non-grid pieces. So now if you want to have this pillar right over here, but you want to move it around at the same spot or like a lot of control over your duplicating, you can press Ctrl X and that will make sure that it duplicates the same pillar, but then you will get the 3D gizmo right over here and you can just move it to that side, you can move it to that side, you can move it up and down right over here. So if you press X again, you will notice that you will get the rotation 3D gizmo right over here. So now you can just move around this pillar or just duplicate it with Ctrl X and move around this pillar. And as you can see, it moves around with 15 degrees. If you turn off angle snap right over here, you can move this around very smoothly with more control. The same technique also works with selecting more pieces. We are still in editing group right over here. If I press control, I can select each and every item I want in my building to duplicate. So for example, I want to duplicate everything right over here. You can either select everything by just holding your mouse button in the corner and then drag it over all your items. That is one way to select everything. So right now I have everything selected. And for example, I want to build a building and I have detailed this with like a little window or maybe a doorway or anything like that. And I want to use this for a bigger building. And then you just press Ctrl D again, and then you will duplicate it on the grid by itself. Ctrl D again, Ctrl D again, Ctrl D and then rotate it just like that and that. This is how you can easily uh, save a lot of time if you're going for a big building. But let's say you want to build a habitat wall and your habitat is right over here. You uh, lower the terrain a little bit. You have a path right over here and you want to have this as a fence around your path so it looks really nice and you have a custom fence instead of like the in-game fences or the path fences. So yeah, we're going to use uh, this wall piece as a fence for your habitat. So what you can do is you select the building. So you go out of the group if you haven't done that yet. So if you are in the group right over here, you just press escape or exit button right over there. So now we have the whole group selected again, eight objects in, and now we're going to move this one down. So press X and we're going to move this one down. So pretend that there is a fence right over here and you wanna have this custom fence going around your fence. So we're going to select the building again. We're going to press Ctrl X in this case. So now it duplicates on the spot itself. And then you're going to move this one around. You can choose to have angle snap on or turned off. If you turn it off, you have more control. If you press X again, you get into the rotation tool. And you now see that you don't have the rotation going upside down. That is because there are grid pieces involved. If there are no grid pieces involved, you can also rotate in different type of angles, but this is only rotating in this direction. So now we can just make sure that we put this one down, select it again, Ctrl X, move that one away, rotate it a little bit more like so. And there you go. Here you go. You are building a custom fence 
right next to your path or anywhere you want it to be. And uh, yeah, you have full control over your custom fences, right? Like this. So let's say, for example, you are in your building and you just want to duplicate a few of these pillars, for example, and you want to uh, extend them, but you don't want to have the walls for some reason. You just select your pillars with holding control, just like that, control X right over here. And then as you can see, you move this one further away. Now, this is something you will find a lot in Planet Zoo, unfortunately. I consider it as a bug, like uh, common sense, this should all go exactly straight and not like this, 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 yeah, this sometimes happens. You will get used to it once you play around with this more and you just put it back like that. So yeah, there's nothing wrong with your game if that happens. That is really something in the game that unfortunately, I don't know, I, I don't think it can be fixed. So yeah, just try to get used to it and try to put it on the right spot where you want it to be if that happens. But don't worry, it's not because you're doing anything wrong. It doesn't happen all the time. It happens with some kind of pieces. I'm not really sure exactly what the reason is behind it. But yeah, just know that that sometimes will happen, unfortunately. So sometimes you have situations where you, for example, have a round path or you have a section in a building you want to have round, but you don't have the pieces for it, the round pieces you have in the game. They don't fit because they're too small. Anything like that, you just need a way to make a nice round fence or you want to build a round roof or anything like that, then the mud pillar is your best friend. This is more advanced building and something just to practice with and to get a hang of it. It's quite easy once you, you understand just how this one works. So in this occasion, we're going to build a round fence around this path and we're going to build a roof, aka canopy for this example viewing gallery. So yeah, the first thing you're gonna do, of course, is put down the mud pillar, just like that. As you can see, this mud pillar is the only piece, and still is, as far as I know, that is exactly in the middle of the grid. I'm sorry that I can't really uh, <laughs> show it that well, but I hope you guys see that this one is exactly where all the lines connect. So this one is a piece in the middle of the grid. So we're going to put this one down. You can also use a two meter one or the one meter one. It really doesn't matter. One of these mud pillars, mud columns are your best friends for doing this. So now we go to a non-grid item and I'm going to use the unpainted Asia timber pieces. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I rotate this one one time, just like that. I'm going to press X and I'm going outside to the edge of this path so this is going to be the size or the width of my fence and I'm going to put this one down and then I'm going to use the East Asia unpainted timber for example so I'm going to rotate this one with angle snap to make sure that it's exactly flat and not in like a weird angle or so just like that and then we're going to move this corner piece or the edge of this pillar to the middle of the mud pillar right over here. Just like so. I think that is quite nice. I'm going to turn off angle snap and then I'm going to point this one a little bit down in an angle just like that. And this one is obviously a little bit too big. So you can also do this with two timbers like so. And just make it a little bit shorter, for example. Uh, but the technique say, stays exactly the same. So now what we're going to do, because this is basically the base of how we're going to build that rotation and going to use this in our advantage. So now you all you need to do is select everything. Control D to duplicate and rotate it two times with Z. And then we're going to put it on the pillar right over here. And we hold shift to go down. Just like that. But now we have two pillars onto each other. So we're going to click one time on the pillar and delete it. And now we're going to do the same right over here. We're going to select everything, duplicate with Ctrl D, rotate it one time, move it down with holding shift, just like that. And then we have, again, two pillars onto each other. So I'm going to remove one of these pillars like so. And now I'm going to select everything again. But now I'm going to hold control and I'm going to deselect this grid piece, which is the mud pillar. So now we have all non-grid pieces selected 
and only the mud pillar is not selected. So now what we're going to do is press Ctrl X and now you have the 3D gizmo right over here. And now, as you can see, if you press X again and you're going to use the green line, you can rotate this exactly in the middle. And that is why the mud pillar is so useful. So yeah, I can just put this one down, Ctrl X again, and I can either keep it open. You can fill this up. If you have some practice with this, you can really create some really cool things with roofs for this, but this is just the basics of how to use the mud pillar. And you can just fill this all up. You can also select everything again once you have like connected a few of them, duplicated, and then you select everything again, unselect the mud pillar, control X. And now you can see that you can just fill this all up. Obviously, I didn't really connect it super nicely. So yeah, you just have to cover it all up and just keep duplicating like so. And now we have a very nice uh, canopy, aka roof. And we have a very nice round little custom fence right over here. And if you have a path connected to that, then obviously you just need to make sure that you select all the pieces right over here to uh, make it open again, which is very easily, depending on what you're building, of course, what you're going to use it for. A uh, very easy way of creating something like this with the mud pillar. And obviously the possibilities are endless in Planet Zoo, but this is how you use the mud pillar. And once you have everything in place, you can just delete this one or replace it with some other pillar you want there to be. As long as you use the technique with the mud pillar to create round walls, round fences, round roofs, etc. So let's say, for example, you have a very nice rock formation right over here. You have some trees around your habitat. You're building a huge habitat and you want an easy way of like duplicating the fences, which are rock set formations, for example, around your habitat. But what you have been doing, you just took some, some rocks and you uh, put them down very nicely. And uh, yeah, now you actually want to want to duplicate everything, but these are all separate rocks, so that is not going to help. So you need to merge them into scenery. So we have this multi-select tool right in the right button of your screen, and then you can make sure that you select everything you want in the blueprint, and then you are going to make a group out of it with merge scenery into group set button right over here. So you click it once, and now you can see we have a nice group with 14 objects right over here, which you can duplicate. Ctrl D, you can duplicate wherever you want it to be. But as you can see, I actually also have some trees in this section, which I actually don't want to have in my building or whatever item you have in your building that you're like, oh no, I don't want that one to be in my group when I duplicate it. So what you can do, you can select the trees all right over here with holding Ctrl. You just click the trees. And then you go back to here, split selection from group. So we're going to click that one. And now this one created a group with only the four trees in it. And now we also have a group with 10 objects in it, which are only the rocks. So now you can control D and just move the rocks around wherever you want them to be. And then you have full control all over your rocks and it saves a lot of time. But sometimes you want to have, for example, all these rocks together in one group again. You go back to multi-selection and you select all of them and you merge them into scenery group. You cannot merge groups together if you have grid pieces in them. You can only merge them together if one of your groups have a grid piece in, but the others are all non-grid items. So if you ever have a moment that you're not able to merge these groups together, that means that two, at least two of the groups, both have grid pieces in them. So keep that in mind. You can't merge them if there are two grid pieces in two groups. But if you have one group with grid pieces and the rest is non-grid pieces, then it's totally fine. Sometimes it happens that it's nighttime and you're still building. You're maybe even underground like we are right now and it's just very dark. And sometimes some people put down some lights in here, but there's an easier way of getting some light. Just press L and you will have a light torch, which is super useful once you are building during nighttime in your zoo. So keep that in mind, press L and you turn it off again, press L and you turn it on again. 
whenever you need some extra light when building. So just a small little tip, aka trick, is that you don't really have to connect your exhibits or, for example, your shops to the path. As you can see right over here, you can just uh, leave it open as long as the keeper and your guests are able to reach it. Same goes for these shops right over here. They are not connected to this path section, but still the guests are able to reach them and the vendor is still able to get out of the shop right over here. And yeah, that leaves you with these funny little tricks right over here. You have this path going a little bit up in an angle, in a rotation, and then you can just put down, I don't know if you want to make it like this, but yeah, this is possible in the game. Just put it next to the path, but you don't have to connect it per se, as long as the guests are able to reach it. So yeah, this is just a funny little trick and tip of how you can use shops without having the need to connect your shops with the path. So whenever you want to start building a habitat and you want to have curved sections right over here, and you uh, put this, this one down and you notice that the first one is always a straight wall, even though you have curved sections on, which is very frustrating. Like the second one, yes, you can rotate, but the first one is straight. So what you can do is easily use the Z button. Whether you have angle snap turned on or off, that is up to you. If you want to have full control over it, just hold the Z button and you will be able to just rotate your wall sets just like that and put it down and then you will go into the same wall rotation as you are used to. And sometimes you will notice that you will have paths like this, for example, a steel mesh one that is not able to bend and you still want it to bend, just use a fence you can bend and then replace it with the fence you want it to be. Very easy way of tricking the system, I guess. I don't know why there is not an option for some fences. Well, obviously some fences, it makes sense that they can't really rotate. But yeah, whatever you want to do, you are able to bend every fence if you just replace it with a fence that should not be able to bend. So just like the electric fence, you can have a round electric fence if you just first start with a fence that can rotate. A question I get a lot on the channel is how I'm able to control my paths so easily with like very short little steps and really have control over how I bend my path to raise it or lower it into the ground. And uh, I'm going to show you guys how easy it is to have full control over your angled path that also probably go into curves most often. That is the, the most fun thing. So yeah, if you have a path right over here, we're just going to put two, three down and then we go to your path options right over here. So what you can do, you can get the curved slopes right over here. So if you have a curved slope and now you have full control, you can also turn on angle snap, of course, to have it like going into 15 degrees, uh, but we're going to use it without any angle snap. And um, yeah, you can have full control over this, but this one is still four meters. So now we scroll down into the options right over here and you have elevated length. If you click that one and you move this one all the way down to a half a meter, then you go back here and now you can see we have way more control and we rotate it a little bit like that over our path and how you use them, which is very, very useful for a lot of different options. And uh, you can also do this, of course, with this staircase. You can have a very nice wavy stairs if you want to, or just use this elevation, like the half a meter only for viewing galleries, for example. So if you have this one turned on again, if you go out of your path, you need to redo this. So don't worry if you, uh, misclick you just need to set it up again so now we go up again with u and then we turn off the curved slopes so now we have a short little stairs right over here and now you want to just have this angle and now you go down like that and obviously if you go flat then it turns into a four meter white one but now you can have like very much more control over your viewing galleries which are only this height i think this is one and a half meter just like that and go down right over here again with half a meter path. It's way easier to control your path. So in your path options, 
use the curved slopes or not if you want to. And then the elevated length on half a meter. So if you have the aquatic pack, you will have this amazing aquatic faux rock. I'm not really sure if I pronounced that right. These are really beautiful rocks, but these rocks can also be recolored. So they really give you advantage in a lot of different biomes of, uh, yeah, you, you can just use these rocks wherever you want to. The downside is that as soon as you uh, recolor a rock and you want to uh, have the same color and you put this one down, for example, this one is the old color again. So I have to recolor it all over again to the color I want it to be. If it's this color, I need to recolor it, which is actually quite annoying. So what you want to do in this case, I'm going to remove these two. Once you start doing that, you just start with putting down two rocks, just like that. And then you're going to merge these two rocks into one group, just like so. And now we go into the group with double clicking. And now we're going to recolor this rock in whatever color I want it to be. So, okay, let's say I want to have this beautiful blue rock right over here. And now if I duplicate this rock, just temporarily just duplicate this one right over here. And I'm going to put this one down. Now what you will notice is that all the rocks you click they are all in this same color. So you can use this in your advantage. Now you can delete these two rocks right over here because those are not the rocks where I'm going to work with. So yeah, just click this one and you can Ctrl D it and duplicate it. But all the rocks you select after that are all in the same color, which are very, very useful. But sometimes when you go out of this group, you go and do some things in your zoo, you get back to it and you want to continue your rock work you click the rock and oh gosh, okay, it's uh, it's uh, the, the old color again. Then you just click a rock, just temporarily duplicate it, put one over here, and then you have the same color rock again. A very useful tip whenever you want to have the same color of rocks. And then you can just delete this one, of course, because all the other rocks are now right over here, all in the same color. So a lot of people that open Planet Zoo and see YouTubers do really awesome things with like hiding tracks and being able to control terrain around your fences or like around your Richmond items, those kind of things. And uh, you are ending up with like trying to do that, but you see these weird corners and it's super ugly and it's not looking the same as a lot of YouTubers you see doing. So there is a very easy fix for this. You go to your settings, your game settings right over here and you click settings and then you go to this game tab. And then what you're going to do is you're going to disable scenery collision, disable track collision, disable terrain collision and disable animal navigation terrain constraints. You click all these four options and you never have to change it again unless you reinstall the game or something like that but once you click this you don't ever have to get back to it so now you click apply and you get this message uh, manipulating terrain through habitat barriers and enrichment items can have unexpected consequences on habitat boundaries animal navigation and water placement so yeah this is an option you can use especially if you're a creative gamer and you want to have full control over everything you do but it comes down sometimes with like weird animations because the animals are really made and animated for example with like how you put these things down like this and not when you raise the terrain and hide it away like that or you want to hide away your tracks for example just like this so yeah there are downsides with it but i don't really mind that i just like to have a full control over everything I build and yeah if the animals do a little bit wonky because I did this weird thing then I really don't mind but keep that in mind but yes no collision is the best thing for you to use if you want to have full control and creative power over everything you're building. So the last tip I will obviously also link in the description down below is this forum post with helpful key bindings. I know a lot of people in my discord server have this one printed out and put it next to them so they have all of the keys you need to know to build in Planet Zoo and to work with Planet Zoo menus, shortcuts, etc. 
So yes, definitely go and find this one if you want to use any shortcuts or key bindings in Planet Zoo and you want to find them very easily, this is the place to go to. So yeah, I really hope this tutorial was useful for you. Do let me know in the comment section down below. Leave a like at the video if you guys enjoyed and subscribe of course if you want to see more tutorials or more Planet Zoo content on the channel and definitely go and check out my other tutorials. The links are all in the description down below. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. And I just really hope to see you guys all in the next one. Bye guys.